What is going on, YouTube? Got another unboxing for you. This is going to be something. This is going to be an unboxing of the ages. Just kidding. Uh, but it is pretty cool. But I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for this one. Uh, multiple reasons why. And we'll get into that. I bet you're wondering, oh my god, is it another Medford? Is that why? No, it is not another Medford. However, it's from a maker that some people don't like just as much. But more importantly, uh, it's this particular knife and the materials that it is made out of uh, is going to garner a little bit of contention amongst the people, more so than usual. Oh, here we go. Ah, oh, got it. Got it. Got it. Oh, and this is the first time buying from Arizona Custom Knives, I believe. So Arizona Custom Knives is a... Uh, Sorry, I had to take a sip of coffee. Arizona Custom Knives is a kind of a consignment shop, right? So uh, you can send stuff there and they will post it for sale. Oh, here it is. Here it is. They'll post it for sale, they'll tack on their percentage and uh, sell it for you. The reason people do that, you can see here's the hint, right? It's a Strider. It is a Strider. Uh, the reason people do that is. Um, because, uh, you know, a lot of people are more comfortable buying from a site like Arizona Custom Knives. They can take credit cards and things like that, different payment options. Um, <clears throat> so it's appealing to list it there. Uh, the prices are not the best though. Here it is. And I am so mad that I did not bring an SMF down here uh, for a comparison because this is an XL and I really wanted to see how it compared to uh, a regular SMF. Um, wow, look at this thing. Uh, Digicam, I have not seen Digicam in person since I was a wee knife collector lad. This is a, I, I don't know what this is. Uh, I don't know if this is a performance center. Um, I don't think it's considered a mixed rider custom. There's no logo on it. Uses the performance center uh, pivot and the different things like that. Um, and then it also has the reversible pocket clip screws here. So I'm, I'm guessing that it's a performance center center setup. It is tuned very much like a um, MSC custom, just the way it runs, um, the way it feels, the detent, stuff like that. Uh, but this thing is cool. So what are we looking at here? We're looking at an XL. These used to be called the SNG XL. And then now I believe it's just called XL. I don't know why it was SNG XL. Um, I guess because the, the SNG has always kind of in Strider lore, kind of always been king in terms of models. And it has to do with, uh, it's it was the first, I believe it was the first size that they made. It was the first knife that they made. And also who the name uh, comes after. Let's compare it to an SNG here. Uh, or who it's named after, right? It's named after some important people uh, who sacrificed themselves for this country. And so I think it holds some reverence, re reverence uh, from that standpoint. And maybe that's why they chose to call it an SNG XL rather than a SMF XL or just an XL. But it is kind of confusing when you're talking sizes to say SNG, SMF, and then SNG XL. It's like, wait, that doesn't really make sense progression wise. So that's probably why they've since kind of, I believe they've dropped that. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think they're called SNG XLs anymore. Um, I believe they're just XLs, Strider XL. And this is considered a production model of the XL. Uh, anyway, so back to what we're looking at. Full tie, both sides, full tiger striped, awesomeness, uh, performance center, pivots, You've got the standoffs like on the MSCs and the other Performance Center models. Uh, this has a Digicam amazing Tonto blade right there. Um, oh, it's so sick, so sick. Uh, super smooth, super nice. Now you may be saying, Carter, why was this controversial? Or why, why would this garner any sort of controversy? Um, and that is the, the blade steel. If you look right there, D2, D2 blade steel. Uh, yeah, yep, that is true. Um, and as much as I would like to say that I think it's CPM D2, I don't think it is because Strider uses CPM D2. 
on other models, and it is always labeled as such. Uh, it is always labeled as CPM D2 with the CPM right in front of it. So, yeah, this is D2. This is D2 on a very expensive, at least for me. I, I don't know what the table price were on this, but I bought it from Arizona Custom Knives, so, you know, more expensive. Uh, these are also sitting out just full retail at a few different retailers for full kind of asking price. And uh, I think that's the reason why is the, the D2. Um, and it is interesting, though, because this is a pretty unique configuration, right? This isn't just, you know, uh, they did a batch of SNGs or SMFs with D2. This is, um, this is pretty cool and unique. I, I don't know if they've done a run quite like this uh, with the Digicam and this kind of a, a Tonto. Um, another reason I wish I would have grabbed my SMF is that has a more standard Tonto, whereas this has like an elongated kind of nose that comes out to a more pronounced point. Um, it's a really cool, cool looking blade shape that I haven't really seen before. It is hollow ground as well, right here, and then flat ground here, so it has a compound grind. Really, really sick. You can see the M Strider on there. Uh, you've got the smaller, uh, uh, smaller, uh, oh, having a brain fart, uh, stop pins coming through here like you see in modern, um, modern striders. Um, this thing is a beast, but why they went D2, I don't know. I don't know if, I mean, Strider's always been into um, tool steels. And Strider, despite them using some pretty uh, unique and interesting cutting edge steels, I do kind of wish that lockup was a little bit earlier. That's kind of late um, for a new knife. But it's pretty, pretty solid there. I need to tighten up the pivot a tad. Um, despite them using some kind of unique type steels throughout the years. Uh, they've never really been a cutting edge steel company, or at least the hype steel company. And they've always liked tool steels, and they've always done tool steel. So I don't know if it was just a, hey, we should do a, a cool run on just standard D2. It's classic. It's a good steel. If it's heat treated correctly in small batches, which this should be, um, uh, it's, it's done really, really well, and it's really good stuff. Uh, however, you know, it's still, uh, I wish it was CPM D2. I don't know why the standard D2. I don't know if they got a batch of it, like, for a really good price and just decided to do something funky with it. I believe these were done for the California Custom Knife Show. Um, if I'm not mistaken, that was kind of the run that they did these. I could be wrong. And then I think they did uh, some double gunner grip versions of this. And, uh, man, this thing is smooth as butter. I do need to tighten up that pivot a tad. Um, it's a little loose for my taste. I prefer a little bit of uh, resistance on my striders. I don't really do the whole, you know, flick open thing on striders for some reason. I do really like this XL. Uh, feels really, really good. Despite a lot of people thinking otherwise, um, striders do not, they're, they're not that huge. Like the SMF, like compared to a lot of knives out there now, the SMF is not like a giant monster beast, you know. It's uh, it's a reasonably sized knife, in my opinion. Uh, so the XL actually gives you a large freaking knife. Uh, let's take a look at the size here. I think it's like 4.25 inch blade, something along those lines. Not a full review, but uh, you know, why not? Uh, yeah, 4.25 inches, a little bit over maybe. Total length is about 10 inches, so nice big size. The full uh, titanium gives it some good weight. Um, it is a pretty, pretty sweet knife. Glad to add it to my collection. Uh, look excited, or I look excited. I am excited to uh, carry this around and take some pictures and stuff. So, all right, guys, that's it. Quick look at the Strider XL Digicam Tonto Full Titanium Monster Beast Knife. Really, really cool. All right, guys, you take it easy. I'm out.